Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back again to Austin Sports Weekend with the man Austin right here. It is time to talk some more NFL football. This week has just been a mishmash of good and incompetent. It has been. There's only 18 weeks this year, and we have finished up week 13. So we're getting down to the end now, so we can really tell who's who and what's what. But before we get rolling too much, thanks again for SevereTV.com for setting us up here in studio. Thanks again for Autographs Plus setting us up with a couple cool helmets. Got a dolphin. I think that's a Tua helmet. I think that's an Eddie George helmet. And Christmas is coming up, so go shopping. Uh, but we're going to talk some NFL football. We need to recap week 13 here. Let's jump in real quick. Thursday night was a barn burner. The Seahawks had started looking a little down lately. But then all of a sudden. They turned into Superman. They wanted to win this game. They really super. And I, honestly, I thought they, they were going to win this game. The, Dallas had, had lost at home the entire year. But they also had not beat a team with a winning record this year. Yep. So the Seahawks came in and gave them all they could. It was a, it was a fantastic game. It, uh, I actually stayed up and watched every bit of it. Of course, I'm a Cowboy fan, but that was, uh, that was, that was actually a really good game. The Seahawks looked really good. The, the Cowboys looked really good. There was actually how many punts in the game? Like maybe one. I think there was one punt maybe in the, in, in the entire game. It was just, <laughs> it was just a bunch of offense, but the Cowboys won by six. So the Cowboys, uh, uh did what they needed to do. Let's jump on into Sunday. We had your Panthers almost. It was really – they almost got the Bucks. What, 21 to 18. You know what I'm stuck in? I'm stuck in a panther wormhole. I'm stuck digging a hole to the center of the earth where I burned to death. But they did look a little bit better. But the, the bad news is their tight end is out indefinitely right now. He got uh, a post-traumatic uh, concussion. He got loss of memory from a concussion, so he's out indefinitely right now. He says it's not the end of his career. He, said, he says he's going to come back, so prayers for him. But uh, but the Panthers did look a little bit better without uh, Frank Reich. Frank Reich as the head coach. Uh, but I'm still suffering from the PTSD, post-traumatic suck disorder. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got a little PTSD going on there as a Panthers fan because your team is really not. Really bad. They're really not very good. And, I mean, smelly. And then, but so hopefully they'll pull some stuff together. I mean, I honestly thought that they were going to win that game. It was really, really close. They were down to the end, and they just. I couldn't. appreciate you trying to dig me out of. I'm my trying world. to pull you out of it, man, because I've been down in there for 25 years. Oh, jump on over to the. Was can you call it a game? I, I can't call, call this game. a game. This game was awful. Chargers 6, Patriots... Nothing. Zero. How about the genius Bill O'Brien, the butt chin? How do you... How do you do that and keep your job? How do you not even get close enough for a field goal? That I was mean, embarrassing. I mean, if you got up to the 40-yard line, that's a 57-yard field goal. You gotta score at home. This was at home. You gotta score more than zero points. You know me. You know me. I'm a. I'm a big thing on on coaches. I think coaches are 75 percent of the game because all these players are really, really good players, or they wouldn't be in there. But we had probably two of the worst coaches in their positions in the game today. And Brandon Staley and Bill O'Brien did show their hands. The Chargers head coach is terrible. If they don't fire him this year, then they, they get, don't they have a chance. They, they they don't they don't care about winning if they no. don't fire. And Staley. the Patriots' offensive coordinator Bill, Bill O'Brien is probably the worst coordinator, coordinator in, football. in football right now. And Kellen Moore still playing, so that's telling you how much I think about Bill O'Brien right now. Bill O'Brien, he has completely ruined the franchise. He almost completely tanked the Texans. He almost sent them back down to Division he Two. He almost messed up Alabama. You know how he hard almost, that he, is. He almost messed up Alabama. He you didn't mess up hard. Alabama. He gave Alabama two losses last year. You know year. how hard that is to yes. accomplish. Mm -hmm. And now, and now he's went up to the Patriots, and they can't score. Get a field goal. They can't at, score at home. They can't score against a point. The Chargers. Do you know what? Statistically, this New England offense is the. Worst scoring offense in 12 years. Of, uh, I, would have, time, I would have thought more than that as bad as they look. Uh, do you know whose offense scored less? Yeah. The St. Louis Rams in 2011, coached by Josh McDerp. Oh, Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels. <laughs> uh, well, at least 
<laughs> at least he's out right now. But if they don't get rid of Bill O'Brien, then uh, then Belichick's probably going to retire just because he can't take it anymore. <laughs> but it would give him the PTSD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, poor Patriots and poor Chargers. Uh, we had to. This was this was probably my shocker of the week. The Cardinals twenty four. What the heck happened here? The Steelers ten. I don't, I don't know. I know there was weather delays, but there's no excuse to crap the bed at home like this. I know Arizona had the number two pick in their in their in their pocket, and they win, <laughs> and they won. I don't. Now New England is two and ten. So New England has the, the number two pick. The number two pick, and Arizona dropped down to the third. To the third, because they are three and ten now. They have another win. Uh, it's I don't know. That was just that was that was super super shocking. I did not expect the Steelers. The Steelers have now the, the Steelers have beat some teams the last two or three weeks that I thought they could have lost to. Yep. But now to lose by fourteen. I just don't understand. I don't really, I don't really understand that at all. No, uh, but I'm. I will find out this week. Uh, we had the Colts at the Titans. Uh, Titans lost it in overtime, thirty-one to twenty-eight. Minshew magic is still alive with the Colts as they are seven and five. Yeah, we were uh, we were actually talking before this game. The Titans were two wins away from the last playoff spot and and two losses away from the uh, second pick in the draft. So they're heading towards that. They're pick in the draft. heading towards that pick in the draft, baby. <laughs> uh, let me tell you one thing. The Colts head coach Shane Steichen is helping me dig my Panther wormhole yes. because he was a candidate for the job. Yeah. And they're seven and five, and over me over here with the worst record in football, not even having a first round pick. I I I, I can't keep on get going, over that. Keep on going, keep on going. Hey, the, the the Chicago Bears will enjoy your first round pick this year. Or next year. Uh, we had the Broncos at the Texans. This was a little bit of a shocker, too. The Broncos have been on a tear lately, but not as much as a shock because the Texans are a good team this year. They, they've they got good players at almost every position and good coaches. and That elevate them. That elevate them and get the best out of them, and they have an offensive line. So the Texans, the Texans again are looking pretty good. I really did expect the, the experience of the Broncos, but this was in – Houston. Houston and Houston so, is rising. Houston is rising, yeah. As a franchise, really, they got they stole everything from Cleveland pretty much. Yeah. And they stole a quarterback that my owner wanted more apparently. I don't know. I don't know. I'm that. sorry about bringing up the Panthers because there was just so many missed opportunities. Yeah, there are so many missed opportunities. I still like honestly I, st- I still like Bryce Young. I still over like his Bryce career. Young too. Better than CJ Stroud, to be honest. So with, but they, but they got to get an offensive line around him, get some receivers that are and not have uh, an younger owner than that, thirty-five and not years have an old. owner that's confused. Yeah, the own that owner is a little confused there. We had the Lions at the Saints. They jumped that on was a, a good game too, man. That they, was a really good game. They jumped on them early and held on when they needed to. Thirty-three to twenty-eight. Uh, this is what this is the best Lions record uh, since what? Is it like seventy-seven or something? It's been a while the since Detroit's been this good. Do you know? And, and this was this was just an off the wall statistic. But you know, like the murder rate in Detroit is down like twenty percent this year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Detroit winning is good for the city and good for the health of the people that live there too. I guess. Yep. Just keep Dan just, Campbell there. Just keep on winning. Just keep on winning, there? baby. I now I had my doubts with him when he first came in. Honestly, I thought he was he m- might have been a little over the over the top. But apparently he's just the right amount a over, over the top. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna chew you off at the neck and <laughs> and he's just military Dan. Military Dan, uh, but they're doing really really good. Uh, we good go news from too, as a Tennessee ball fan, H- Hendon Hooker was activated to the to the practice for to the be able Lions. to practice for the Lions this year. So if they do end up going into the playoffs, he will probably end up being on a, on a playoff roster going in. So that's good for him to get a little experience as we go far as that goes. go from a good game like that to uh, another crap show. Yeah, Falcons, Jets 13-8. to eight. That's a baseball score. The Jets continue to make offense look like solving a Rubik's Cube. Yeah, and the uh, uh, Sarlie looked over at Wilson and said, hey, you should come play football on him. No. 
<laughs> you benched me once. I ain't going out oh, there why again. Why you benched me? Why don't I go out there again so, so I can look bad and you can bench me again? <laughs> oh, wait. So I can go back to an offense coordinated by Nathaniel Hackett? Now, Nathaniel Hackett is a bad offensive coordinator, too. And a bad head coach. And a bad, and then he was head coach of who? The Denver Broncos, Denver Broncos last, year. last year. And he got fired halfway through the season. And now he's offensive coordinator for the Jets. And they, and they are score. They are terrible, too. We were, we were we were actually talking. If if I was bad enough at, at my job to get fired because I was terrible at my job, would you hire me Unless and give me the same opportunity the again? The only way that that could happen is if Aaron Rodgers brings you along because no, he's but your favorite. There, there's so many of them. Hackett keeps getting a job, and Bill O'Brien keeps getting a job. Even though they're terrible and at their jobs. McDaniel keeps getting How do they keep getting jobs? Why do you keep on giving people the opportunities to be bad when they were bad the last time? I don't. Maybe Sean Payton had a point mm. by calling him just one of the worst coaches in the league. Now, some of them make good coordinators when they're not good head coaches. Like, I love – I love <laughs> – uh, the head coach of the Buccaneers. Todd Bowles is a Todd good D coordinator. Todd Bowles is a fantastic D coordinator. But he's a bad I don't head think coach. He doesn't need to be a head coach. Bill O'Brien needs to drop down to high school football. He's bad at everything. He, he needs to go need down to, be, to Division Three uh, yeah, FB something. football. Yeah, he needs to go down way, way. He needs to get out of the uh, NFL. And you know, some of the other ones are good. Some of the other ones are bad. McDaniels is not a bad offensive coordinator. Mike McDaniel. Oh, Josh McDaniels. Yeah, Josh McDaniels. He's but, not he's, a but he's terrible as he's a, head a coach. terrible as a head coach, and I know these people keep getting their chances over and over, and I don't understand it. But hey, they just keep on recycling. We had the Dolphins, Commanders, the Dolphins back in the swing of things again, forty-five <laughs> to fifteen. <laughs> the Commanders have tapered off quite a bit. The Commanders started to started out the season hot, and then their defense is the Ice last cold. Is the last. 32nd ranked pass defense in the NFL as the Commanders. Yeah. They can't mm -hmm. stop the pass to save their lives. And Howell looked good at the beginning of the season, but now I think he press is trying to do too much. I think he, he threw a pick six in this game. And uh, the Dolphins just keep – they just keep swimming along. Mm -hmm. The Dolphins and Tyreek Hill keep swimming along. He's a, he has, I mean, he's he on has, his way He's too. on pace to, to be the most prolific wide receiver record. Not – I still think Jerry Rice is the best ever, but – Tyreek Hill may have the best numbers for a season ever. He's he going to approach 2,000 receiving That's yards. You know crazy. the film, highlight film on some of them? He can, mm -hmm. he makes secondaries, the, the, this is a metaphor really, uh, he makes a secondary look stupid. Yeah, and the funny thing is he said he was going to do it at the beginning of the year and he's doing it. I mean, I mean it ain't like... He's backing up his he's talk. He's backing up his talk. He's backing up his talk. Uh, or... NFL game of the week was the 49ers at the Eagles, but it didn't turn out it to be a game of the week. emphatic point. Ah, the 49ers just dismantled the Eagles in Philly. Just an absolute emphatic point to me. Yeah. Uh, the 49ers are back fully healthy with Williams on the offensive line and Debo Samuel. How they about got that? their swagger. How about that Debo Samuel? Is he not something? He is. Every the, time he touches the ball, Something he good happens. 60 yards, uh, 40 Something yards. good happens when he touches the football. Hand it to him, end around, throw it to him, middle range, throw it deep. It don't matter. Just get Debo Samuels the ball. And John Jennings looked really good in that game, too. He, he also had, got he had, fun. He had one of the best stiff arms that he we've seen the entire year. He pushed an eagle down on the floor. Yeah, and then ran in for a touchdown. So the 49ers are back into the full swing, and they're and they're back again as my top pick coming out of the NFC to go to the Super Bowl again. They were our, they were your top pick at the beginning of the year for the Super Bowl, and they're my top pick now, too. I thought the Eagles might be a little bit something for them, but uh, not after that game. Maybe that'll give the Eagles motivation. I don't know. We'll see. Could be. Now, the Eagles have won a lot of, like, really close games this year. So, you know, people are saying, uh, you know, they could have, they're could they sort of similar to last year's Vikings. They won a bunch of games, but you don't know exactly how good they are. How good they are because of the, you know, a bunch of them are, were really close. Could have come in either way. But the Eagles are still the number two uh, team behind the 49ers as far as uh, power goes in my book right now. Because uh, Jalen Hurts is still Jalen Hurts. He's still fantastic. We had the Browns, Rams. Uh, There's only so much that defense can do. Yeah, the Browns offense is completely letting the defense down. That team's going down a little bit. And uh, I've told Dad during the game that there's two versions of Kevin Stefanski, the head coach. Mm -hmm. There's Kevin Stachadsky when he makes a good play. Yeah. And Kevin Statwitsky. 
when yeah, he whenever makes a bad he makes one. a bad. And honestly, I don't blame him as much because he is so limited on what he can do now. I mean, he's got. He so had many. Joe Flacco. They called him in. He was he was he was actually washing dishes, and his wife, you know, answered the phone and came and got him and said, "Hey, honey, uh, somebody's want to talk to you about playing football." And he's like, "What <laughs> <laughs> football?" But I mean, but to give him credit, he threw for two hundred and what two hundred sixty yards. Yeah, he tried. He really, 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 really tried, but there I feel just like wasn't that much there. Offensive coaching, I feel like, needs to be in question. It's really hard to coach that many different styles of quarterback, though. They had Deshaun Watson, and then they had a rookie who had no clue what he was doing, and then they had a a fifteen year veteran that is not mobile. You know, it's I don't. I give him a little bit of a slack because how do you handle that? How do you change all of your play sheet from Deshaun Watson to Joe Flacco? In I two mean, weeks. Even though Deshaun Watson, I I can understand because the style was different, completely different style. Now you got a drop back pass, or now quick yeah. Joe Flacco learn this playbook. <laughs> yeah, and this playbook really ain't your style of playing, but here do the best you can. I don't know. I give the Browns a little slack, but just, the, just because of injuries. Track and they turned their season around. But they have turned their season around. The they Rams got, are in a good position to better. possibly they sneak better. in. Yeah, they could slip in there, Tim. We had Matthew Stafford's got a little magic left. Mm -hmm. We had the the uh, Chiefs Packers. This was a surprise. The Packers uh, are in love <laughs> right now. They're pretty. Did you, did you see the one sign in the crowd? It's a love story. <laughs> Oh yeah, it oh, was. It was a lose. You can't blame Taylor. Sw I'm not blaming Taylor Swift for this Chiefs I'm loss. Not blaming. No, Taylor Swift was. That's the first time they've lost with Taylor Swift in the building. Do you know who I blame for this loss? Matthew Nagy. Their uh, offensive coordinator. The Nag should not be an offensive coordinator either. He's one of the people who keeps getting a shot and he really isn't that good. He really. I mean, when you could take the Chiefs and what's their what's their record now? Eight and four. When you could take Patrick Mahomes and, and can look somewhat pedestrian. I, I, I showed you this. His numbers so far through the year are com are comparable to the backup quarterback for the Giants. Why does Matt Nagy have a job? Andy Reid's got to see the problem. When you can take Patrick Mahomes and make him look like a backup quarterback as far as numbers go. Let me tell you something. If the Chiefs wide receivers could catch the ball this year. Uh, yeah, but if they could then catch the ball. Then why? Can't they catch the ball this year? They caught the ball well with Eric B. Enemy. Now they can't catch the ball with Matt Nagy. I don't know. It's do you a, see? Do you see the polarization? I'm trying to point out. Yeah, yeah. The, they need to uh, change play callers. I mean, they probably won't, but uh, but they really do need to at the end of the season. the the only The only thing is, all of all of his competition, all the quarterbacks are keep getting hurt. There's no, but there's only like two or three teams left that could go against him. You got the the Ravens could go against him. You got the Dolphins could go against him. It's uh, another straight pass. <laughs> it's a, I mean, all the other quarterbacks are getting hurt. There's nobody to, but anyways, uh, the Packers actually to talk good about the Packers. That was a very good game. They they, they played good. good play calling that from the start, and it was good. It was off. good, crisp. Love looked like he was a In backup control. that learned. So we'll see how that goes. And then the Monday night game that I fell asleep, didn't even get to see, was fantastic. Jaguars. Bengals, Jaguars. Not only that, they have Trevor Lawrence out for an high ankle sprain. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence is out for, they say he could be back quick, but high ankle sprains are weeks. Sometimes it takes that micro <laughs> surgery in your ankles to even get back within three or four weeks. And what a bad time to have it happen because Indianapolis and Houston are right on their tails. Yeah, and and that just takes another uh, one of the top tier teams out of the way of the Chiefs. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's really sad how many starting quarterbacks we've lost this year. Uh, I mean, the team that they played, the, the Bengals, their backup quarterback, he, he he looked really really good, you know, and they won with a field goal there at the end of, that the kicker thought he missed, but uh, it was fantastic. Kudos to the Bengals. Will the Bengals turn their, turn their season around with this? I ain't gonna say no because that quarterback looked pretty good. So we'll just sort of see have to see how the next go. Let's go ahead and jump into the next week. We got week fourteen here. And, oh my gosh! And Thursday night. Oh my gosh! I'll, I'm not. <laughs> Patriots at Steelers. Oh, my gosh. The Steelers coming off of a loss should win by 15 points on this, shouldn't they? Yeah, they should because that Patriot offense is ugly. Ugly. With a capital U. 
Uh, Pittsburgh's only favored by five. That's telling you. How, well, you know, see, the the Steelers, their starting quarterback, Pickett, is out. Injured and out. There's so many starting quarterbacks out. But still, Do we blame the turf at this point? No, I don't know what it is. It's something. It's something. There's more injuries this year than I can remember. Normally, you'll lose one or two starting quarterbacks throughout the year. We've lost five or six just out of the AFC. It's crazy. But I got the, I got the Steelers winning that. And then let's jump into your your team and uh, uh, we'll – We'll save my team down to the end because it is the 8 o'clock game. But we got the Panthers Saints. Uh, Saints. Saints win by double digits. Someone put me out of my. <laughs> New Orleans by four and a half. You got New Orleans, huh? By double just digits. Let it, out, let it out of the way. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and jump it down. We got the Bucks Falcons. Uh, this is actually for the lead of the division, isn't it? Yep. Which is just absolutely baffling. Absolutely terrible. Uh, the, Buc- the Bucks are five and seven. And if they win, they'll be six and seven and leading the division. What an absolute travesty of a division. Yeah. <laughs> Just look back. And honestly, uh, the uh, the Falcons are favored by two and a half. Do you like the Falcons? Do you like the Bucks? I would, I would normally, I like the talent of the Bucks, but I don't like the head coach. So I'm probably have to go Falcons in this just because uh, the Buccaneers head coach will find some way to, out, to coach them into a loss, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, Colts, Bengals. You want to pick? I'm gonna Indi- go Bengals. You want to go Bengals? I'm gonna go Bengals. Want to pick the Bengals? I'm feel good. Believe it or not, it's it's only a one and a half point line. So you can just pick anyone you want. It's almost a pick 'em game, anyways. Uh, Jaguars, Browns. This one lost a little bit of steam. Didn't yeah, it? this one's lost a little bit of steam. It's, I mean, almost almost all the games anymore. The Colts, Bengals are a battle of backup quarterbacks. The Jaguars, Browns are a battle of backup quarterbacks. I mean, we've lost so many quarterbacks. Uh. I'll probably take the Browns just because without Trevor Lawrence in there. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough for the Jaguars. And at least Flacco's got one under his belt now. Uh, Texans, Jets. I would take Tex- I would take the Texans there. Line's three and a half. I, There's only so I still much like that, that J-E-T-S defense can do to hold off that offense. Yeah, the offense is just so. Now, Wilson's supposed to come back to start again. He said he would. So he's supposed to be back starting again this week. But I don't know if that's enough. We got the Rams Ravens. This should be a really good game. The Rams are surging, but the Ravens are too. I definitely think the Ravens are going to win, but by how much do you think? Line's seven and a half. Do you think seven? Maybe and a half? seven. So I'm, I'm almost leaning a little bit on the Rams plus seven and a half too. I, but I definitely think the Ravens win, uh, but maybe by around six or so. We got the Lions Bears. Oh my! <laughs> Sorry. I can't help oh. it. Every time they play. Uh, I got the Lions winning this one, too. The Lions only three and a half on this one. I'm pretty comfortable with the Lions winning that one by more than three and a half. Josh Dobbs trying to shake off his really, uh, really rough. His, his really rough. rough. I think it was rough play calling. I think it was rough. I think of the, I think the whole team as a team was rough. But this is probably Josh Dobbs' last chance to take that starting job. Yeah, it, but it really he is. had a... Uh, I think he would admit he had a rough game last the last yeah. time he played. And I love Josh Dobbs to death. Uh, I met him, hung out with him a little bit, had dinner with him. He is a fantastic human being and just love him to death. He's a great person. And I wish – I hope he goes in there and throws for 350 yards and just stomps it on down and, and, and keeps on going. I just wonder if Kevin O'Connell will coach – him properly and that's what i, feel I like. questioned i really did question some of his play calling last week some of the stuff that he called was suspect it was suspect last week but uh but nothing went right that week so we'll, so we'll give him the benefit of that Minnesota's favor but three i think they pull that out seahawks 49ers 49ers 49ers, the 49ers by a country mile the 49ers right won by 30 well, almost 30. They won by 23 last week over Philly. I think they take care of Seattle pretty easily. Uh, this is a huge, pivotal have, game. You would have never thought that this game at this point in the year would have been this big of a game. But Bill's Chiefs, man, these teams need to win this. Matt Nagy can't be Matt Nagy and Sean McDermott can't slip up. No. This is – what are you going to do here? The Bills are 6-6. Six and six, The Chiefs are 8-4. and four. The, I would probably take the Chiefs just because the Chiefs are coming off of a loss and they're at home. But I wouldn't be surprised if Matt. I Nagy, wouldn't be behind, I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Navy calls a horrible game and uh, the Bills win. I would. I would not be surprised. 
Uh, we got Broncos, Chargers. Uh, Chargers <laughs> are favorite. I'm picking the Broncos. I'm not going to pick. Do you think I'm going to pick the Chargers to win something? No. Well, probably, not with well, Brandon I picked Staley. them last week to beat the Patriots just because I knew how bad the Patriots were. But that's my one time that I'll pick the Chargers to win. I'm, I'm going to pick the Broncos. The I'm picking the Broncos. So you got plus two and a half. And then Monday Night Football. You got a double header. Deuce games. Packers, Giants. Uh, the, the Packers looked good. I'm going to go Packers. Uh, minus six and a half. And then we had Titans, Dolphins. This is going to be a blowout. The Dolphins and the Titans. Oh, what a coincidence. We yeah, got the Dolphins and Titans here. Coincidence. Uh, Dolphins, uh, the Lions 13, I think they actually beat them a more than that. Because guess who knocked the Dolphins out of the playoffs last year? Titans. The Titans did. There may be a little bit of a revenge game, maybe. Do you think the For Dolphins? a couple of years ago, they knocked them out. So yeah, that might be a little bit ago. on their yeah, mind. A little bit on it, yeah. But anyways, yeah, uh, that is it. That is uh, NFL football week 13, week 14. Hope you had a little fun with us. We love talking football. Uh, be if sure you want to dig the wormhole with me and continue digging forward, you can go ahead and you know, type down in the comment section if you want me to continue to dig my wormhole. Uh, I have a little uh, have a little prayer for the uh, Panthers to take and <laughs> turn it around. And can they they got to buy this week. That's my. They're not going to lose. <laughs> they're not going to lose this week. Sorry, they're not. But they're not going to lose us. Anyways, we hope you had a little fun with us. Uh, be sure and share us with your fans. Thanks again for uh, uh, SuperTV.com. Thanks again for Autographs Plus hooking us up here. And we'll see you for more NFL football. See you next week. <laughs>